Well, hello. Thanks for joining us today in the Alltech Studios. Today we're going to be discussing trip curves as they relate to the DINRO mount miniature circuit breakers. With us today in the studio, we have Alltech's product director, Klaus Toom. Klaus, how are you? Good. I'm fine, Dave. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Good. Klaus, I think this is a, a, a subject that comes up a lot. I think a lot of people sell these breakers, uh, these IEC type breakers, and I think the differences are pretty much trip curves. And uh, today we're going to go over those real quick, so let's uh, dive right into it. As you can see on this slide here, uh, there are three different types of circuit breakers, uh, the 49, the 508, and the 1077. Underneath each one, you're going to see a different amount of trip curves, different trip curves for each one. Uh, when, when we look at this here, we've got two brands that we carry, uh, the Alltech and the ABL, okay, giving people two choices of basically a, a physical uh, look here. And the trip curves that we show here, they're available in both types, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. When I look at a slide like this, I say, oh boy, Alltech has a lot of trip curves. When it comes to our competitors, uh, or do they have the exact same trip curves? Basically, they have the same amount? Uh, pretty much in UL49 and UL1077, they have the same amount. Uh, ABB has uh, maybe uh, another couple of curves in, in 489 and even in 1077. Uh, but we, we can mirror most of them then with the 508, where we have, uh, in addition to the BCD, which are the yeah, European type basic trip curves. Uh, we have an EG and Z, and that's where we differentiate from the competition uh, besides having a 508, which nobody else really offers or promotes. Okay. When you go through the, all those different trip curves, your your G's, your Z's, your Z's, I'm sure a lot of people, like myself, the salespeople out there, you know, it's sometimes it, it, it doesn't mean a lot to them, doesn't register. So that's why we're here. So when you're looking at all of those different curves, that's the difference between those breakers. Can you explain what we're looking at here? This is a trip curve. This is something that explains what that curve is doing, or why we want to see or why we want to be. So maybe maybe explain with this cursor right here, what are we looking at? Essentially, any kind of a trip curve, uh, irregardless if it's uh, for a circuit breaker or a fuse, uh, essentially it always just tells you uh, when that device will or will not trip. And usually what we do here uh, is everything to the left of the curve, uh, the device, or in this case, the B-trip circuit breaker will not trip. Everything to the right of the curve, it will trip immediately. Everything within the curve, it may or may not trip. But maybe just go a little bit in detail here. Uh, on the x-axis, we have multiples of rated current. On the y-axis, we have a time. So it's essentially a relation of time versus current. The higher the, the current, the faster the time, the faster the, the breaker will trip. The slower the time, the lower the current, the breaker may or may not trip. So just to keep it simple, it says here multiples of rated current. Let's just pretend this is a 1 amp breaker. So we're just looking here at 1 amp, 2 amp, 3 amp, all the way up to 100 amp. Here we have, we are going up from or down from an hour all the way to microseconds. So um, essentially, we are looking here at an overload section. I will get to that in, in a little bit more detail uh, uh, in, in another slide down the road. And here we are looking at uh, the short circuit area and the uh, inrush capability area. So me, maybe we can just go to the next curve. Um, and uh, what I just mentioned here, uh, we show this now in the D trip curve, the no trip and the instantaneous trip or the trip immediately zones. Uh, the D trip is a, is a better example of uh, for explaining uh, yeah the the different functionalities of the curve. Um, so you have um, let's say you have a no trip zone. Just to give you an idea, you have an overload of four seconds, two amps, and it's in the no trip zone. So the breaker will not trip. Um, you have that same two amp uh, overload for four minutes now for a longer time 
and it, it is already to the right of the curve if you jump over here and there it is uh, it will trip immediately the same thing you have uh, the no trip in the short circuit area is important that's why we have different trip curves because you want to pick a different trip curve for your different loads. Any, any kind of a load has an inrush, an on-off type of spike current. Uh, and uh, you want to make sure you size your trip curve according to, yeah, that the inrush current is not too high for that, uh, for the trip curve. And then instead of being in the no trip zone, you all of a sudden spike over to the instantaneous trip zone. And then the breaker looks at that like it's a short circuit. Uh, so that's why we have different trip zones. So for example, oh, trip curves, I'm sorry. Uh, so for example, you have a motor, that motor, uh, if it's a one amp motor, that usually has an inrush current of six, six times rated current. So just, again, to keep it simple, six amps. So it's a little spike, a real quick spike here. Uh, it's not over here. It's 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 faster than that. So it's over here in the in the millisecond area, and it will not touch the curve. So it will not affect the curve. So it will not trip. So if you have a customer saying, "Oh, I have nuisance tripping uh, on my device. Your breakers are bad." Uh, no, they they are not bad. They just picked the wrong trip curve. Um, on the flip side, if you have a short circuit, then the short circuit is usually 50 times, 100 times the rated current. So if you are still at that uh, millisecond area and you have a 100, 100 uh, amp short, it will trip immediately because now you're in the trip, in the instantaneous trip zone. Okay, so it seems pretty easy to understand. You have your amperage down here and your, and your time up here. As you're using the, the one amp example, uh, 4D, and, and you're talking motors, and, and just throwing this in there, D curves are usually used for motors. Correct. Okay. Because of that initial inrush of starting that motor, uh, the it'll it'll feel a few more amps. So you want to, it's an allowance. Basically, you're giving it just a little leeway so that nothing happens, like you said, nuisance stripping. That makes sense to me. All right. Okay. Now here, what we have is we have a B trip curve and we have a D trip curve. The D trip we just discussed is you know, more or less for, for the motors, allowing you that allowance of area here for that startup of the motor so you won't have the nuisance tripping. What are we looking at with the B curve here? The the B curve is more like for general electronics, but then also uh, sometimes if you just pronounce B and D trip and maybe you have an accent like me, uh, you might confuse them. So just to give you an example here, if you by accident pick the B trip for a motor application, and now we have that inrush current. Now we are looking at that six times rated current or six amp, uh, one amp motor. And, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the other way, okay. Uh, and then you, you look at that uh, six amp inrush current and that, that B trip curve says, hey, that's a short circuit. I have to trip immediately because again, this is the immediate trip zone. This is a not no trip zone. So you again, as I said, you want to pick your your curve as close as possible to your inrush currents to have proper protection, but still have the allowance for the inrush current. So if you use here general electronics, they don't they can't handle a big inrush current because, as I said, they look at it already like a, sh a little bit of a short circuit. So then the components will destroy. So you want to make sure you have them tied or two rated current. So uh, that's the difference between a B and a D. And as I said, if somebody picks the wrong trip curve and it has and he has nuisance tripping, uh, then it's an easy fix essentially. Um, and there's uh, some, some room for discussion then with the customer. Okay, uh, real quick, I wanted to mention on the bottom here when it comes to these trip curves, um, you're going to see a lot of these trip curves in other manufacturers' uh, catalogs um, or something like them. Here on ours, we're, we're saying this. What, what does this say? Uh, we've got uh, 1 amp through 10 amp here and 0.3 amp through 10 amp. This is telling me that I happen to know that, that when the, uh, with the miniature circuit breakers, uh, they go up to what, 63 amp? 
Correct. in most cases. Yeah. After that, you're going to molded case or some other type of, of breaker. So when it comes to the miniature circuit breakers, you're going to go to about 63 amp. This is telling me this graph here goes up to 10 amp. Is there another graph that handles the higher amperages up to 63? Correct. And really the, the difference is uh, more or less in, in the overload section. Uh, then there's right next to this graph is another graph where it says, okay, from 12 amp to 60 amp or 63 amp. And then really the curve, which may be a little bit different. And by the way, I have not mentioned this dark black line. This is the ideal trip curve for the breaker. But since it's a bimetal in them, in all the breakers, which is essentially two metals uh, fused together, uh, and it's essentially a mechanical device and a mechanical calibration process. There's no way we can be that narrow on the trip curve. So that's why that's the ideal trip curve. But we have the little tolerance to the left and to the right of, of that ideal trip curve just to give a little bit room for manufacturing tolerances and for not have to calibrate a breaker then for 25 hours. Uh, when right now it more, probably takes a, a couple of minutes. Okay, so for each trip curve in our catalog, we're going to have two graphs. Correct. That's what that says. All right. All right. Now this is oh, oh, always gets me. There are, are are a couple different types of breakers out there. Now now we have the thermal magnetic breakers. I've seen hydraulic magnetic breakers out there, uh, but pretty much they're all doing the same. Uh, there are some different characteristics. Now the thermal um, magnetic. Can you show us where we are with this and what this means to our breakers? Uh, essentially, uh, the thermal or the overload section, it's uh, the, the slower area, so to speak, of the, of the uh, trip curve. Uh, we are talking here seconds, seconds to minutes or actually up to an hour. Uh, it's, it's the area where, yeah, let's say you, you have some sort of uh, go back to the uh, to the uh, to the motor, and you have maybe like a uh, the coil winding. The insulation is is starting to go, and you have uh, uh, some sort of a leakage current, and your your current gets a little bit higher, overrated current uh, for for a longer period of time. Or if you go to a household application. Saturday mornings, you vacuum the living room and you you vacuum up a, a dog toy or uh, one of your kids' toys, and the vacuum wants to yeah uh, put that in the container and and it can't because it's too big, and then the eventually your your breaker trips in your garage or basement. That's an overload thing. Uh, that's an overload condition. Uh, it's a longer period of time and a low level of rated car or higher current over rated current. On the flip side, the short circuit part or the magnetic trip, that's what we discussed already a little bit more in detail. That is the one where on the left side, we're talking about different inrush currents for different loads. On the right side, it is a short circuit. Again, coming to a household application, uh, yeah, you, you have a young kid and it, uh, yeah, for example, it gets its hand on a, on a piece of wire and maybe the ends are uninsulated and he puts it in the outlet or she puts it in the outlet uh, uh, face to neutral and makes a, a dead short. Um, hopefully that will never happen, uh, but that it can happen. That's why some of these uh, outlets are now all child proof uh, because it happened in the past. That is a dead short. Uh, and that is at a level where, yeah, as I said, like maybe 40 times, 100 times the rated current. Okay, so the the, the overload, the thermal part is is the motor's working too hard. It starts to heat up, and then of course the short circuit is basically a, a, a short circuit the ground in a sense. Correct. Okay. All right. Now here we are. We have uh, trip curves here explained. Now we have the B, C, the D, the E, the G, the Z. Um, would I be correct to say that I'm looking at the B up here, it's the shorter of them, or, or what are we looking at here? Is there an, any, any kind of order that they're in? Yeah, people uh, regularly refer to them as like a, a short trip or fast trip. So the B and the Z are the fast trip. Yeah, upper left, bottom right, 
They are the fast trips. They are for semiconductors or real, yeah, high-end semiconductors for the Z-trip. Uh, as I mentioned before, they cannot handle any kind of an inrush current. If there is an inrush current, they already look at it like it's a short circuit, and you need to protect these components. Then the C-trip and the G-trip are essentially general yeah, middle-of-the-road applications where people don't know, oh, I have some mixed loads, and I don't know really if I have an inrush current or not, but I want some protection. So the C and the G are good for that. And then the D and the E are for motors and for transformers, especially the E. I sell a lot for transformer applications where actually the inrush current could go up to 15 to 20 times the rated current. So sometimes people even have to oversize to get their transformer to turn on without any nuisance tripping. Okay. I'm looking at six different trip curves here. Availability or price, I mean, is there a difference? Do you, do you mentioned the C and the G. Do you keep more of those in stock? I mean, what's more common? Uh, probably this is like a, the offering of our 508s. Uh, the D and the G are most common, but again, like since the competition offers B, C, and D, we, we pretty much have C, D, and G uh, yeah, very well stocked. Uh, e, we have some. Z, we have some. Uh, but it's uh, really like specialty applications and uh, repeat business, repeat customers come to us because we have the E and the Z trip. Uh, but definitely C, D, and G is our most heavily stocked. Price-wise, B, C, D, E, G are pretty much the same. Z is more expensive because it's it's harder to manufacture. Okay, all right. So this is a great slide right here. Trip curve applications. This gives you an idea of where the B, the C, the D, and the E, the G, and the Z uh, could be used just as a kind of a general idea, general rule when you're thinking about it. Someone calls you up for a D trip, a breaker. Right now, you know, you can look at it as, okay, they must have some type of motor application. If someone's using the E's and the Z's, then you're looking at pretty much the electronic world, right? So you kind of get an right. idea of, of uh, at least now what the trip curves can do for you, the reason maybe why your customers are ordering these the certain trip curves. Once again, uh, the competition out there. Uh, they do have these trip curves also, uh, but we do have a few more because of our uh, UL 508 breakers, which no one really uh, covers that except except Alltech. All right. Um, let me see what this. Okay. So once again, price and availability, uh, the 49, the 508, and the 1077. Uh, always, the 49 is a little more expensive than the 508, and then the the 1077 is the least expensive out of all of them. But I will mention this to all of you, that Alltech has a full line for the 49, 508, and 1077, whereas our competition, uh, most of them do just go with the 49 and the 1077. So we basically have all the flavors, kind of like a Baskin Robbins, okay, of circuit breakers. Yes. Uh, so more offering, uh, more trip curves, more amperage ratings. So it's kind of fill all of the different needs out there, all right? Uh, price and availability, as, as Klaus said, we do keep most of all, all these uh, items here at Alltech, and, um, and, and the, all the prices are pretty much linear. Well, that's it for now. Uh, Klaus is available for any kind of questions. If you have anything at all, uh, Klaus is the guy you want to call. There's his contact information. Um, if there's any technical issues, if you have any pricing issues, anything at all, please feel free to give Klaus a call and um, he'll be there to answer any of your questions. Yeah, or have the customer call or do a joint call. Uh, I'm, I'm here to, to help. Okay. Well, thanks again uh, for, for joining us, Klaus, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Yeah, thank you, Dave. All right, and we'll see all you. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.